Hey, my brothers and sisters and friends across New York State and anywhere else you might be watching. Today we are discussing, I don't know why I'm here. Today we're discussing Unit 3, Day 3. Oh my God, every time I start one of these notes, I just get so excited. How about you? Are you excited? Are you ready to be here? You're like, man, Mr. Krause, I hope you teach us some cool stuff because math is awesome. I know that's what you're thinking. I know, I know. So... If you always want to find us, most of what we can find or most of what we do can be found at, oh, what am I doing? I'm starting with infinity because it's so cool. NKInfinity.com. That's our website. If you're here and you're watching and you like what you see, I'm not saying this because <laughs> we know that ain't true. Maybe you just like my Dunkin' Donuts coffee and my commercials that I don't get paid for, but I really don't do. Anyway, I'm just joking about those. Hit the subscribe button. It's probably down there somewhere. It looks like a little red button. I don't know. What does it look like? Let me see if I can find one. So, like, you go... I don't even know where I got to go. Not there. Not there. Oh, maybe there. Oh, go to YouTube. Oh, whatever. Let's leave. Yep, 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 yep. I don't know. My channel. Oh, see all these little red subscribe buttons? Just hit the subscribe button. It says subscribe. That means you love me. Okay, that's creepy. Okay, it just means you like math. No, don't. Mm. Uh, I don't know. It just helps. Please subscribe. Okay, my name is Mr. Key for the next few. This is probably going to be a long video. I'm not going to lie. This may be a class you do over two days. Not really sure. Um, so we better get started. Anybody got any questions? Mary. Yes, yes. I'm growing a nothing. I just too lazy to shave. Anyway, let's get going. All right. So when you first look at this problem, a football player attempts to cook football over goalposts. The path of the football can be modeled by what? Okay. Now, it's important to understand what these things mean. X is the horizontal distance from the kick. That's the distance along the field. H is the height of the football. So, if I'm thinking, you know, clearly I have an X squared here, so that's a parabola. It's a negative x squared, so and that kind of makes sense. My ball is going to go up, and it's going to come down. It's going to start on the ground. Footballs are started on the ground, and they end on the ground. It's, since we know it's also starting on the ground, because do you see any c value? Do you see any constant? There's no constant there, which means that the y-intercept is zero. So I already know a point to graph, and I'm feeling really good about myself right there. Now, I don't know what this scale is on the bottom. I don't know this scale. And I don't know this scale. Now, if I had to guess, you know, a really good football player kicks the ball maybe, what, 60, 70 yards? I don't know. I think a really good one might kick at 60 yards. Wait, is this a field goal? This is a field goal. The best field goal ever was 70 yards. So my guess is this thing is not going to go more than 70 yards. But let's just take a look. So... What we need to do is graph this thing. So we're going to take out our graphing calculator. Now, when I first put this in, you're going to see that nothing looks right. So control division, uh, negative, I'm going to look at my calculator thing here, negative 1 over, I don't know why answer came up. It's negative 1 over 2, 2, 5, x squared. Plus two thirds x. Somebody came up with this formula, and they're my hero. I'm not gonna lie. I love them. They are fan. No, I don't know. We came up with this somewhere. We came up with this. All right, hit enter. Oh my goodness, it's a straight line. This ball's going to the moon. It's so straight. It just keeps going and going and going and. Go oh, it's a it's a proud. We know it's a proud, don't we? So this is a really, 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 really crappy window to start with. I mean, really crappy. So let's think. Remember the x-axis is the horizontal distance along the ground. So we're going to go into menu, and we're going to go into window or zoom, and we're going to go into window settings. So what would be the maximum distance? The maximum distance might be what? 
let a hundred yards. Let's go with a hundred. The most it can be is a hundred. It can't be anything more than that. So it has to be before a hundred. So let's go with a hundred. And then negative ten is good because remember we want to see the axes. So having a negative number is good, even though we know we can't have negative distance. Having a negative number there is pretty good. All right, let's talk about height. Height of a ball. What does it go? The highest it goes. Maybe maybe. 40 feet, 50 feet, I don't know. Let's start with 100. Oh, wait, this is negative. So we're going to start with negative. All right, let's start. D, negative, negative. All right, sometimes that doesn't work. Negative, clear. Negative, I don't know, negative 10 and 100. These may not be good numbers, but they're bigger than I need. I know they're bigger than I need. Nobody's kicking a football 100 yards in the air. Uh, is it feet? What are we working in here? Feet. They might be bigger than I need to know. Maybe they are bigger. Let's check. What? What? Wait a second. I can't wait. Okay, so I know I don't need a hundred. It looks like maybe I only need like a third of that. So I'll go with fifty. But why can I not see that? Hundred. A football field's only a hundred yards long. Wait. Football field's 100 yards long? Well, 100 yards is 300 feet. Wait, so if it kicks at 70 yards, that's really like 200 feet. So maybe I want 200 feet. So menu, window trace. Sometimes you don't get it right the first time, man. You got to be careful of units. Let's try 200. Maybe that's a good number. And we decided this was too big. So let's go back to 50. And... Ah, there we go. All right, so I can see the entire curve now. I see the entire curve. So what am I going to do? Oh, let's go over to, let's go over here and fill out this now that we've talked about this. I, a lot of people will tell you to put zero here. I don't like zero. Let me show you why. If you didn't watch my other video, let me show you why I don't like zeros. If you put zeros there, they're just not my favorite. If I put a zero there, and I put a zero there, on the graph, you can see it. You see it down there? You can see it. It's just not great. Let me view. Let me zoom in a little bit more. Maybe you can see better. It's just not great, right? You're like, okay, I can see where the tick marks are, but it's not great. See, when you take it and you put, I always do 10%. I like to do 10% at a minimum. So negative 10 and 10 is sometimes pretty good. Negative, negative 10, and down here, negative 10. And then you can see the axes. You get a little bit better picture. Now, you have to be smart enough to realize that anything to the left here is useless, and anything down here is useless. All right. So it looks like it got out here. This was 200. So I'm going to go back to my document here. I'm going to say, okay, we made this negative 10, and we made a max of, I don't know, 200. Well, 200 was a little much. Could I have reduced that maybe a little bit? Eh, 200 is good. And my Y min was negative 10, and my Y max was 50. Now, uh, let's go to the table. Oh, let's check something out. I want to check something. I want to see how many boxes I got here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen. This is twenty. I should have stopped. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Wait. One. I thought there were thirty boxes. Two, three, four, five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. One, two, three, four, five, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen. Uh, twenty. One, two, three, four, five, twenty-five. One, two, three, four, five, thirty. All right, so thirty. Let's see how long. I'm going to go to the table. I just want to see how long this takes. I'm, you know, what I'm working on is how, what I want to make my scale. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to be here all day doing this. Oh, my gosh. I'm going to be here all day. All, I got to get up to like 200. Okay, that doesn't make any sense. So let's go back to our document here and say, okay, let's start the table at zero. We're going to go into table set. 
And let's go every five. Let's go every five instead of every 10. That wouldn't take too long. So how do I do that? Control T. Menu. Well, actually, I think I just hit menu here, table, uh, edit table settings. So right here in the table, I go edit table settings. I want to start at zero. And what this table step says is I want you to count every five. I want you to count every five. Oh, okay. Now, now, oh, wait. Every, every once in a while, I get a nice number. Do you see that? Every once in a while, I get a nice number. Oh, 180 is already negative. I can't use that. What's the highest number I got to get to? Ooh, that's zero right there. 150 was zero. So if I go back to my scale and I need 150, can't I make every of these boxes five? So this would be 25. This would be 50. This would be 75. This would be 100. This would be 125 and then 150. Because 150 where it's coming down. So that's as far as I need. So up here, could I have used less? I could have used maybe 160 or 170. Sure. 200 is okay, though. You get a picture. Now, the high as this thing goes is somewhere in the middle. Now, halfway between is like 75. So let's go check out 75. Ah, 75 is 25. So, it's, so I only need to get up to 25 here. So... Let's make every 2, 5, 5, 10, 15, 20, 25. So at 75, I'm at 25. Oh, that's good. That's good. That's good. All right, so let's just get all the numbers in that we can. We're going to get all the fives. Oops. So we know 0, 0, 5. Now 15 is 9. So... 0, 0, 15, 5, 10, 15 is 9. We're only going to use the ones I can. 30 is 16. And 45, 30 is 16. And 45 is 21. So we're only going to use the numbers that we can easily graph. You know, sometimes you don't get this option. Sometimes you just got to graph numbers that are like this, you know, and you'd say, okay, I'm going to graph 23. Nobody can graph 23.22 anyway, so 24, oh, what was 24? 60 was 24, uh, 60 is 24, 75, and then I'll just go to the other side over here, what is that, got to be 95 then, right? I mean, 75, and then 90, 90 is 24, oops. What was 24 before I lost it? 60. Right here. Nope, right here. 60. All right. And then they're going to be symmetrical, so I know this one's going to be here. And I know if I go over to my table, uh, I lost it. Dang. Come on, baby. Let's go. 105 is 21. 125 is 16. One more. 135 is 9, and 150 is 0. Now, again, take a look at this 0. Remember, this e to the negative 12, that means point, point, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 0, 1. That's 0, okay? All right, so we got it. We grabbed it. Now, i got to grab that smooth curve. There's my football. It's up in the air. It's going. It's going. It's going. And it's lands right there. So, determine the vertex. Well, we know the vertex. It was 75, 25. Interpret the meaning of this vertex. So, remember, the x value is along the bottom. That's our horizontal distance. And this is the field distance. And this is my height. So, after... 75 feet, it's important you get your units right. Remember when I was talking earlier about units, yards, and stuff, and we didn't accommodate for that? So at 75 feet, the ball is 
25 feet in the air. All right, the goal post is 10 feet high, 45 yards away from the kick. Will the ball pass over the goal post? So this is a 45 yard field goal. So we come up to our thing here and we go, all right, 45 yards, we grab our key, we go 45 yards, 10, it's only 10, the goal post is right here, it's 10 high, so will it cover it? So the goal post is 10 high, and we're at 45 yards. What's that, John? Yeah, yeah, 45 yards, that's 45 yards. That's not 45 yards? What do you mean that's not 45 yards? That's 45 yards right there, 45, see? 25, 30, 35, 40, 45, 45 yards, 45. Susie, uh, stop being rude. Okay, okay, I screwed up. I got it. God, you kids are ridiculous. All right, kids, just be careful of your units. Remember, this may say 45 yards, but the units on our X scale was not in yards, it was in feet, because the, the original problem was in feet. That's why I took that and put that in bold. You gotta take 45 and multiply by three. That gives you, and those of you that lift weights, you know that's 135 pounds. For two plates and a bar is 135 pounds. I know, some of you like football players, oh yeah, I remember when I was going to lift 135 pounds, I lift like 500 now, so that's not a problem, but I do remember that. All right, so it's always a big accomplishment when you get there. So really what we want is, this 10 yards, but we get, need to be out here at 145 feet. And so this is 145 feet. And here is my bar height. That's why I graphed that 10. Does the ball go over the bar? No, it falls short. What was the bar height at 145? By the way, at one... Oh, I want 135. It should be one. It should be 135. By the way, 135. That's, 135 is right here. So I sort of, sort of screwed up. This should be 135 right here. So this should be going right through here like that. Ah, that's gonna screw up my whole. I, of course, I screw up the one point. The one point that was so important. So this is 135 right here. And there's what should go through. And when I grab this sucker, sorry about that, kitties. When I grab that sucker at 135, it should go through like this. All right. And so, and now I go back to my 10 yard goal post. My 10 yard goal post is right here at 135. So if I come down here and actually show the math, the height at 135 is only nine feet. We need it to be 10 feet. So no, the ball will not pass over, over the bar. Buffalo Bills lose another Super Bowl. <laughs> not that I'm sorry about or sore about that. Anyway, all right, and, and your work, here's your justification, and there's your answer. All right, kids, sorry about the messy there. Let's get going. By the way, you can also reach us at algebra2commoncore.com as well. We're there as well. All right, so <clears throat> common characteristics of a parabola, of a parabolic curve, is having a squared term. The, 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 the highest degree is 2. It's a squared term. Having a parabola that's going to go down is negative. All right, and then the rest of it's kind of like, okay, I got it. I know that this is going to be, you should know that this is going to be a curve that does this. Now, why did I start here? I started here because I now have a y-intercept of six. The last one was the football example. I started here and came down, but that's because it didn't have a y-intercept. So start to recognize things that are going on in your graph. So the height of a ball 
in feet reach when thrown in the air in time t. Now my t variables on the bottom, I call this t, I should probably call this t, uh, is given by the equation h of t is equal to that. Okay, on the set of graph the function. So I'm throwing a ball, it's gonna start at six. How far can you throw a ball, 100 feet? Maybe at the most, I don't know. So let's get this let's get this baby in here. I hit doc B, clear everything out, go back into graphing calculator mode. I'm gonna go negative 16x. Now, of course, for the calculator, you gotta use the x. And then uh, plus 32, plus 30, I don't know why I said that, but we're gonna use 30x, and then plus six. Again, you're not gonna see much. Oh my goodness. Wait a second, look at this, check this out. I only, it, wait, did I do this right? It looks like I'm only going like three seconds. Maybe two seconds. This ball's in the air for only two seconds. So clearly this scale's terrible, and I can't even come close to seeing the top of this thing. By the way, one option for finding the top is just to go to Menu, Analyze Graph, and then do Maximum in this case. And I get to the left-hand side. Where's my... Why did it go there? I go to the left-hand side, I go to the right-hand side, and it tells me my maximum's around 20 feet in the air. So when I go to my um, menu and I go into window and zoom, and I go to window settings, I might pick, I don't know. Well, let's see, I don't, watch this. I don't wanna do negative 10 here and only do three seconds here, two seconds here. I don't even know if two seconds probably enough, but negative 10 doesn't make any sense. I might just do negative a half, because I don't really want much to the left. I really want the stuff to the right, and if I'm only going two to the right, I don't really want to go much to the left. And I'm only going 21 up, or maybe we'll make this like 25. I'm only going 25 up. That means that I want negative 10 down. How about negative two? I always say about 10%. Just drop off the number, 10%. Ah, that's a pretty good looking graph right there, if I say so myself. Even still having this 0.5 off here to the left is kind of a lot, but that's okay. But clearly two was not enough, right? So we're gonna have to go into menu, uh, windows and zoom four, oops, escape, four, and then one, and then change this to three. Ah, that's even, that's okay, that's okay. Three is fine. So let's see what we got here. Um, eh, it still seems like a lot of extra here. You know what else I can do to find? I want to find out what that is. So I'm going to go to menu. Do you remember we talked about it yesterday? It's called, when it hits the x-axis, it's called a root or a zero. So we're going to go to six, analyze the graph, and we're going to go to zero, and then we're going to go click and click. No, crap. Can I undo that? I hate when my cal... Oh, good. Let me put it back. Menu, six, and then we're going to go to zero, one, and let's see if I can uh, click here. Doesn't like when I use my pen for some reason. So click here, click here, boom, there it is. So it looks like it barely goes over two. So maybe I just, let's see. Well, 2.1 would be enough. Ooh, wait, that works out perfect. Let's go zero and 2.1. I mean, I'm going to go, yeah, whatever. Window settings on my calculator, I might go 2.5. Y min, we said was, well, remember, we also don't want to use zero, so let's use negative a half. I use negative a half. A lot of your teachers will just say put zero there, and that's fine. That's absolutely fine. I like to have a little bit of the axis shown. Uh, I'm going to go negative two here and 25 here. Now, we just said that, I need to get to 2.1. That's like 21, right? So 0 0.1, 0 0.2, 0 0.3, 0 0.4, 0 0.5. This is similar to the last one. It's 0.6, 0.7, 0.8, 0.9, 1.0. 1.1, 1.2, 1.3, 1.4, 1.5, 1.6, 1.7, 1.8, 1.9, 2.5. 
1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20. <laughs> Sorry about that. My, my graph paper on my answer key, and it might be different on yours, only has 20 boxes, not 30 boxes. I don't know why this one has 30. I don't know, I don't know how I changed that. So whatever. Um, and this would be 2.1 right here. Okay. And we know we had to get up to 20. So let's go. Well, there's 20 boxes. Well, we got to get up to 20. So I can't make every box one. One, two, three, four, five. That's five. Six, seven, eight, nine, ten, ten. 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17. There's only 17 boxes. That's not going to be quite enough. So let's go every one of them is two. So 2, 4, 6, 8, 10, 12, 14, 16, 18, 20. All right, let's get this thing in our, well, we got this thing in our calculator. If I go to the table, again, we have that same issue with the table. Check how stupid these numbers are. At zero, I'm at six. At one, I'm at 20. And at two, I'm at two. But then, like, it doesn't make any sense to do these, right? So we'll go into menu, table settings, and we'll edit the table settings. I want to still start at zero. But here, how about we make these 0.1 instead of 1.0, and we'll click OK. So what I'm saying here on our table start, we're going to start at zero, but we want to do 0 0.1, not 1.0, because that didn't make any sense. All right. So let's just pick all the good numbers that we good. Hopefully, we'll get some good numbers. So 0, 6, we know that. 0, 2, 4, 6. We're starting at 6 high. And the next good number, do I even get a good number? 17. 0. 0.5 is 17. Let's see. That's 18, so there's 0.5 is 17, shoot. And then 0.9 is, oh, 1 is 20. 1 is 20, and 0.9 was like really close. I mean, it was 20.04. Oh, it looks like that's our highest. 0.9 is 20.04. Uh, one is 20, 1 1.5 is 15, two is two, and it hits. So it's really, really, really important to find the vertex. You have to find the vertex. Not graphing the vertex is not okay. It's got to be somewhere around here, but I'm not exactly sure. So I want to find that vertex. So hit Control T. Let's get rid of that. Oh, I already did find that vertex, right? It was at 0 938 and 20.1. So that's somewhere 0 0.938 and 20.1. 20.1 20 would be right about there. So just to understand, it should be around there somewhere. And down. Okay, there we go. So determine the vertex of this thing. So we just did that. We said that x value was 9.38. And if you actually go into it, I don't know why it's coming up slow, but it's actually a little bit more than that. But that's enough. And then h of 9.38 is equal to uh, 20 point, we said 1 in this case. So interpret the meaning of the vertex in the context of this problem. So, um, oh, by the way, it's not 9.38. 9 point, well, the highest we go is 2. It's 0.938. So it should be 0.938, not 9.38. Ooh, almost messed up there. So at, 
So the vertex, nah, at 0.938 seconds, the ball will be at its maximum height of 20.1 feet in the air. That's what air. That's what that those numbers mean in context. That's what they mean in real life. So Jimmy, we got Jimmy. Jimmy is trying to throw a ball to his friend Brendan. The ball will be at right above Brendan's head after 1.5 seconds. Seconds. If Brendan can reach up 10 feet tall in the air, will he be able to reach the ball? So what we want to do is we want to come back to our graph. And really, you just want to graph 10 feet. And we said that the ball will be over Brendan's head at 1.5 seconds, right here. Well, where is the ball going to be? The ball is going to be way up here. We determined at 1.5 seconds. So what we need to come back to here and say, okay, what is h of 1.5? We could just pipe that in our calculator, or we can go to our table. We can go back to our table, because I don't remember what it was. Do control T and go to 1.5 seconds. Oh shoot it. Reset back. Menu, table, table settings, and we're gonna change this to oh, there it goes crazy again. Uh, 0.1, click OK, menu, table, edit table settings, 0.1, click OK, and then we want to find 1.5. I could have just plugged it in, and it was 15 feet. So at 1.5 seconds, it's 15 feet. So the answer is no, at 1.5 seconds, the ball will be still 15 feet in the air. Jimmy will be riding the bench this year. Just kidding, Jimmy. You're a good baseball player that can't seem to throw a ball to another kid. All right. That's the end of that problem, children. Let's keep going. When I'm in the middle of a really long lesson and I need energy, I just reach for my Dunkin' Donuts coffee. The K-Cup this morning was delicious. Oh my gosh, that was it. That was the money. That was it. That's for money right there. I'm going to get some serious sponsorship there. I am. Dunkin' Donuts going to be like, man, we got to sponsor that guy. He's great. Have you ever wondered why we called this NK Infinity? Because this is the class that never ends. It goes on and on, my friends. All right, here we go. So again, the characteristics of... A parabolic curve is the highest degree is a squared. It doesn't matter if it doesn't come first. So what? This person decided to do 120i minus 12i squared. It's still the highest degree is 12, and actually the leading coefficient is this negative, right? Because this is not written in standard form. So once again, this is going to be a parabolic curve that does this. Now, I haven't even read the context of the problem, but I know whatever it is, it has to start at zero because there is no constant in this problem. There's no five or eight or ten. You know, there's only two terms. One of them has an i and one of them has an i squared. So we know this is going to be an upside down parabola because of the negative, and we know it's going to be a parabolic curve because it's a squared. So let's see what they're talking about here. The equation, blah, represents the power in watts. Oh, now I'm all confused. Now they're talking about watts. Okay, I know I plug my cell phone in and charge. I don't understand this watts things. And sometimes I go the whole day and my phone sucks because the battery sucks. That's my phone, by the way. I need a new phone. Uh, oh, you're going to send me a new phone? I'd like the Samsung Galaxy Note 7, please. 
Oh, you don't have like a billion dollars for that one? Don't worry about it. Um, at a 120 volt circuit, yep, now I'm still confused. I got all these numbers coming at me. With a ohm resistance of 12 ohms. Uh, what? Uh, 12 ohms? By the way, the symbol for ohms is this. It's omega. That's ohms. I knew that. That's some education I got myself in the army. Um, when the current I is flowing through the current, on the set of axes, grow black, graph this thing. Okay, so I have no idea. Okay, this is one of those problems like, uh, I knew a football, how far that was going to go. I knew somebody could throw a baseball approximately how far it would go. I have no clue what is going on here. None. Now, some of you are smart enough to factor out the 12, and you're going to figure out that I is 10, and I need the X value, or my, my I value of 10. By the way, this should be I down here, probably not X. So let's take a look at what this looks like graphically. We hit Doc B to get rid of all that crap. Hit the calculator again. So it was 120 I, we have to use X, minus 12 X squared. Enter. <laughs> all I even see is this blue one over here. Oh, there's a little blue over here. All right, so it looks like we're going 0 to 10. And it looks like we're going really, 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 really far up. Like really far up. So I have no idea how that's going. So I'm actually going to go menu. I want to find the maximum. So 6 and 3, just to find that maximum. See how I can slide my point? I don't know where it is up. I know it's up there somewhere. So I'm going to click way to the left. It does not like when I use my pen, mouse. And way to the right. And, oh, 5, 300. 300. Now, let's say you didn't do that. And you said, okay, let's go into menu, window, window settings. And you're going, okay, I'm going to pick my X min as negative 2. Remember, we're only going to 10. That one we could figure out, 10. And then my Y min, I don't know. Let's go negative 10 and 100. I'm like, all right. There, ooh, still can't see it. Not only that, it's like I'm like at least twice far off. So I go menu, Windows and Zoom, Windows settings, and I'm going to go down here and change this to 200. Still off. And I'm thinking, why are you trying to, like, incrementally go? I'm going to go way over and then come. It's easier to go way over and then come back. So I'll come over here, and I'm going to go 600. I'm going to shoot way over. Oh, wait, okay. So that's we already know it's 300, by the way. But wait, 600 looks like twice as much. Maybe I'll go 350. So I really want to get a good picture of what this thing looks like. So I'm going to get... You really don't want it to look like that, 350. This is a much better, ah, that's a perfect picture. It looks nice. You can see the ending. You know, maybe you want to go a little bit past 10, but I think 10 is where it's going to hit anyway, so that's fine. So come back over here to your notes, and we say, okay, my X min, I made negative 10. Oh, negative 1. My X max, I made 10. My X min, oh, wait, let's go see. My Y min, does that look nice? I can see that graph. What did I make that, negative 10? I think I made that negative 10. Negative 10, and I made this 350. Good enough. Good enough. Good enough. All right. So now I can get a good picture of what's going on with this graph. I don't know what an ohm is. I don't know what resistance is. I don't know what a watt is. I know I plug my, some, my cell phone in, and it charges. But what you do know is basic information. I know I got to get from 0 to 10. So let's make every 2, 1, 2, 4, 6, Eight. Uh, let's make every one. Let's make every two. Uh, 0 0.5. 0 0.5. One. One point five. Two. Two point five. Three. Uh oh. Three point five. Four. Nope. Not gonna get there. Can't do that. All right. So let's make every. I gotta get to ten. So let's make every three one. One. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Oh, okay, that's perfect. What I don't want is a little tiny graph like this. I mean, if I give you this, if your teacher and your uh, exam gives you a big piece of graph paper, they would like you to fill it. 
take a look at it. It doesn't take much more of your ink. Just fill it. Make it look nice. Okay, I got to get to 300. And there's only like 15 boxes or 18 boxes or whatever we came up with. So let's make every box 20. So I do that 20. And then 40, 60, 80, 100. 120, 140, 160, 180, 200. 220, 240, 260, 280, 300. Do you see how I'm going to make a nice big graph? I'm using the whole piece of paper that I've been given. So 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9. I probably should label this down here. This is I. And this is, uh, I don't remember. This is W sub I. This is Watts. Okay. So I don't know. Oh, 5, 300. Didn't we do that work already? 5, 300. We know the maximum. 5, 300. But let's go to the table. Now, the table should be nice here because we only went 1 to 10. So menu or control T. I thought I hit control. Control T. All right. So at 0, we were at 0. Stop that. Stop it. Stop it. At 0, we're at 0. At 1, it's 108. So it's 0, 0. At 1, it's 108. That's somewhere around here. At 2, it's 192, somewhere around here. At, let's see, at 3, it's 250, 240, 220, 240, 252. At 3, it's, at 4, it's 288. So at 4, it's 2, that's 280, it's 290, there's about 288. So now we just come back. Now they all match. Remember, most part, if you're doing it this way, it's symmetrical. And then at 10, it's back to zero. And let's verify at 10 that it was zero. Ah, there it is. 10 is zero. By the way, the reason... Oh, let me let me grab this. The reason all those smarty pants knew that it was going to be 10... Is because if I come up here and I take out a, and we'll do, we're going to be doing this tomorrow. I'll take out a GCF 12i. I'm left with uh, 10 minus i. So at z, at 10, that would be zero. So that whole thing would be zero. But that's how I knew. Anyway, let's see. Determine the vertex of i. The vertex was five three hundred. Interpret the meaning of this vertex. And so now you got to do the very very best. So remember. This is watts. So the maximum number of watts occurs when five current. Wait. Oh, when I having a resistance of 12 ohms, when a current I is flowing. The only thing that I don't like about this is They don't tell you what the units for current is. The, cur the unit for current is amps. They should have told you that. The unit for current, I don't see it in here. I know they have this 12 ohms, but ohms is like a resistor. It stops or it slows down current somehow. So what we want to say is, and I don't like that. I'm going to have to maybe change that problem, make sure you know that current is in amps. So we have a maximum. Maximum number of watts um, I should have said the maximum number of watts 300 occurs when 5 amps of current is running through the circuit. You shouldn't have to know all of this stuff in order to figure out, all this electrical stuff in order to figure out the answer. You should be able to piece it together, and I should have put the word amps in there. So hopefully that's in there when you get this. How many ohms are flowing? How many amps? I should say how many amps are flowing through the circuit to have a power of zero? Power watts is number of power. So, 
Um, we want to know when w of i is equal to zero. So it could be zero amps, but that really doesn't answer the question. If, if I say how many amps and you say zero amps, well, that's just kind of stupid. So the answer is when 10 amps are running through the circuit, Uh, has a power of zero. Has a power of zero. All right, that's the end of that problem, children. <coughs> sorry, uh, took a little break there. Uh, sorry about that. Uh, that's weird. So let's see what we got in this one. So. Oh, finally, I got a problem I can understand. A rock is thrown vertically, that means up in the air, from the ground with a velocity of 24 meters per second. And it reaches a height of V of T of... And then, uh, okay, here's what I do know. I do know it's a parabolic curve that's going down because the highest degree is squared and it has a negative coefficient in front of it. That means that's really the negative leading coefficient. I have a y-intercept of 2, which means it's starting meters per second. So it looks like we're working in meters. It's starting 2 meters in the air, just in case you're wondering. 2 meters is about maybe, what, 6 feet, something like that? Uh, maybe it's a little more. It's actually a lot more. It's 6 inches more than that. So it's six and a half feet, I think. So anyway, um, it's starting, and that makes sense, six and a half feet in the air, you're throwing a rock. Okay, so let's graph this baby and see what we got. Doc B, graph, I have no idea, two plus 24T minus 4.9 X squared. <laughs> Hit enter. That's cool. It looks like it's going to take about five, five seconds. I have no idea how high it is. So I'm going to go really high. Uh, four, one, let's go. Uh, let's go negative one. And just to make safe, let's go six. And let's go negative 10. And I have no idea how long we're throwing this up there. Let's make it 200. I don't know. Oh, 200 was way too much. So not even 100, so maybe 50, 60. So menu, four, one, ding, 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 ding. That was overkill, so we'll go to 50. Maybe 50 is not enough. Ah, that's good, perfect 50 is good. All right, look, I can see the whole thing. I got a great picture of what's going on here. So when I come over here and tell my teacher, yo, teach, I used negative one and six and negative 10. And again, you could put zeros in X-Men and I used 60. And I saw a really good picture. Uh, okay, so on the top, I know I don't need to get to 60. So 0, let's say 10, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60. That's enough. And I only need to get to 5. So 1, 2, 3, 4, Five. I don't know if it's five. Maybe it's six. Maybe it's seven. I wasn't even paying attention. Um, all right. So down here where it says, what do you want your table to start at? I want it to start at zero, and I want it to count by ones. I don't really want to count by anything less than ones. Uh, well, hold on a second. I don't know. Let's see. I'm only using half the graph here. Let's see, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11. Let's see what this number is. I'm going to go to menu. Remember how we get there? Remember it's called a zero. So we're going to go menu, analyze the graph, 6, and we're going to call it zero. So you got to get to the left side, click. Doesn't like when I use that. I don't know why I keep doing that. Zero and zero. So it looks like it's just less than 5. Just less than five. So maybe in order to get a better handle on what's going on, maybe what I'm going to do is make every one of these a half. 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, 4, 
four, four point five, and five. Because I don't need to get exactly five. Remember what I said to you. I really want you to kind of spread it out and take a look and see what we got going on. All right. So maybe I don't want my table steps to be one. Maybe I just want them to be a half. It gives me maybe a little bit better picture of what's going on. So I'll go into Control T. We're going to go into Table Settings. And we'll go into Table Settings. Oops, escape. What just happened? Control T. Control T. So Menu table settings and we're going to go into five and we want to do this at maybe 0.5 just trying to get you comfortable using your calculator to help you graph stuff all right so okay there we go so zero is two we kind of knew that zero is two and a half is like a little less than 13 so a half that's 10 so somewhere in this area one is 21, a little bit more than 21. One point five is really close to 27. So that would be somewhere around here. Uh, two would be at 30.4. So somewhere around there. Why do these keep disappearing? And 2.5 would be around 32, which doesn't. And 3 would be around almost exactly at 30. So notice, because it's not symmetrical, we're not catching the vertex. We're going to have to find that. And 3.5 would be at 26. 3.5 would be right around 26. That would be right here in the middle somewhere. Oh my God, I wish that thing wouldn't pop up. Uh, four would be right around 20. And let's see. 4.5 is right around 11. And right around five or just before five is zero. Notice five is really negative. So just before five, I'll put a point. So there it is. We really should find this vertex. So let me hit get rid of this. Control T. We'll go into menu, uh, analyze the graph. We want to find that maximum. We want to find, you always want to find that maximum anyway. So click. Oh, yeah. What am I going to learn? Click, click. There it is. Maximums at 2.45. So at 2.45, we're at 31. At 2.45, there's the maximum right there. I wish it would just let me go. All right, there it is. There's our vertex. And that's 2.45 comma 31.4. All right. After how many seconds to the nearest tenth of a second will the rock throne reach its maximum height? What is the maximum height? So, uh, so at t equals 2.5 seconds. Remember, it was really 2.45. Did I did I type this in right? Twenty four x minus four point nine x squared okay we're good so 2.5 seconds and my height h of t was equal to we said 31.4 feet ah not feet meters be careful with your units how many seconds after the rock thrown will it hit the ground so remember we want to find we want to find that zero we just did that it was at 4.98 seconds and it doesn't say round, so we're going to say at t equals 4.98 seconds. Is that it? I'm done with that problem. Woohoo! Oh, no. Wait. Didn't we just do this problem? All right. All right, here we go. I, we did not do this problem yet, but we did one similar to it. 
Uh, and so at this point, it'd probably be in your best interest to just try this one on your own. Just try it on your own. See what you come up with. So hit the pause button. I'll make a weird face. You hit the pause button. And then uh, we'll be back. All right, ready? <laughs> Hope I was bogey free. All right, here we go. You're back. Well, oh, oh, thanks for coming back. So this is going to represent zero. This is going to represent zero. Uh, we're throwing a ball again. We have a squared term. It's going to be a parabola. It's a negative squared term, so it's coming down. we got to get this baby typed into our calculator. I, I don't know where my calculator is. There it is. So Doc B gets rid of that crap. Let's go back in. Uh, negative 16x squared plus 48x plus 48x. I hope you're not just watching me do this. Um, because first of all, it's creepy, and second of all, you should be trying this on your own. It looks like it's going to take about three seconds to finish, and it's going to go way up in the air. So I'm going to go menu. Uh, we're going to change the window settings. I'll say negative one, and we'll go to four seconds just to be safe. We'll go negative 10 here to real life problem, and we'll go up to 100. You can't throw a baseball more than 100. Eh, that's too much. Menu, I don't like that. Menu, we'll change the settings a little bit. We'll change this to 50. Because clearly 50 is probably a better number. All right, we got a real good picture now of what's going on with our graph. Really good picture. Um, and it looks like it took a little over three seconds anyway, so that was good that I went past three. All right, so over here, x min negative 1, x max 4, y min negative 10, y max 50. Since I'm going to 1 to 4, I probably want my table to start at 0, and we'll go every half a second. No, we're only going 4 seconds, so let's go, yeah, half a second's probably enough data points. That'll give me 8 data points, right? Could take each 4 and half. So I think i got to get the 4 seconds, so let's go 0.5, 1, 1.5, 2, 2.5, 3, 3.5, 4. And I only got to get up to 50, so 10, 20, 30, 40, 50. And I said 60, right? Let's go up to 60. I have no idea what the max is. By the way, you know, all these things can be found really, really fast. Menu, analyze the graph. We'll go maximum three. Click, click. There it is at 1.5. It's 42 feet in the air. We'll go menu. Uh, analyze the graph, zero, and we'll click here, and we'll click here. It's a little bit past three seconds. So we got all that information that we already need for our graph. Let's go to the table, control T. And we go to go to menu, and we decided we're going to change the table settings so that this was 0.5. And we know zero was six because it was six feet. It started six feet in the air. It even said it in the problem, started six feet in the air. So zero is six. We know at 3.1, it's going to hit the ground again. So right about there, it's going to hit the ground again. We also know at 1.5, it was at its maximum height of 42. We already know that. So let's put the rest of it in. 0.5 is 26. 1 is 38. This one's probably, now this may or may not be symmetrical, I don't know. 42. 2 is 38. Looks like it is. Probably 3 then will be, or 2.5 will be 26. 3 will be 6. 6. Oh, these are 26. Put those in the wrong place. Six. Six. All right. There it is. Starts at six feet in the air. It goes up to 42 feet. It comes back down and lands right there. All right. After how many seconds will the ball reach its maximum height? T equals 1.5 seconds. Into the nearest tenth of a meter, the h of 1.5 will equal 42 feet.
Did you read? Did you see it? Do you know why I'm hesitating? I'm hesitating because of this right here. What is this doing in this problem? Meters. I even bolded it. You guys, you guys are as bad as me. We're missing. Can that be my answer? I don't think so. So did I give you any conversions? I probably should have given you a conversion on this thing. Did not give you any conversions. We can always Google it. I think Alexa can say, tell me. Oh, not Alexa. What's her name? Uh, hey, Cortana. How many meters are in one foot? One foot is approximately 0 0.3 meters. So there's my conversion. One foot equals 3.3048. So one foot equals 0 0.3048 meters. All right. Thank you, Cortana. That's the new Microsoft Edge. Okay. So that's what I need. So I need to convert this to meters. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to say, okay, I've got 42 feet. And I want meters, so I need to get rid of feet. So one foot goes down here, and 0 0.3048 meters goes here. Now, if you do this, notice the meters cancel, gone, and or the feet cancel, gone, gone. So really, all I got to do is take 48, 42, and multiply it by 3.3048. So 42 times 0.3048. And it tells me I've got 12.801. So 12.081 uh, meters. So my answer to this question is H of 1.5 seconds is really equal to 12.1 meters. Woo. After how many seconds will it fall? Ball be again at six seconds. If you go back to your graph, remember at three seconds it was at six feet in the air, so T equals six seconds. It's a wonderful life you guys live in where I can just say, hey, somebody, find me some information. You know, back when I was young, we didn't have that. You had to actually do some work or just not answer the question, right? <laughs> this better be the last problem. I just drank, ran out of Dunkin' Donuts coffee, and it's 8 o'clock, and I haven't had breakfast, so I'm hungry. Wow. Okay. The table below this, the... Oh, right, a quadratic regression. So a little review from yesterday, a quadratic regression model. So let's get this equation. We know it's going to be in the form y equals ax squared plus bx plus c. So we got to figure out what a is, what b is, what c is. So don't forget to read the problem. It says right here, let zero represent 1999. So if you're coming up to your table, you can't put in 1999. You got to put in zero. This is one. This is two. This is three. This is four. So let's get to our calculator. Where is my calculator? Go to the home screen. Click on this. Make sure, there's, make sure it's only 1.1. This is, what is this? This is the year, and this was number of cases. Zero, one, two, three, four. And we had four, one, three, five, six. Four, one, three, five, six. Four, one, two, six, seven. Forty, eight, three, three. Forty, one, two, eighty, nine. And 43,171. All right. So common mistake made, not getting those numbers typed in there correctly. Just be very, very, very careful. And the 0, 1, 2, 3, 4 would really mess you up if you didn't get that right. We're going to go into menu. We're going to go into statistics. We're going to go into stat calculations. And we want quadratic regression, not cubic. That's third. Not quartic. That's fourth. Quadratic regression. 
We called our x value, believe it or not, y, because it stood for year. That was our independent variable. And our dependent variable was the number of cases. Just be careful. Y may not have been, I should have probably written years out there, because that's kind of confusing. You just got to make sure you put it in the right places. All right. Uh, there it is. Highlight the box so you know what it is. It's 345.1428. 345.1, I think it puts fours on purpose, 4, 2, 8, 5, 7, 1, that's probably enough, 5, 7, 1, B is negative 10, 15, point, 3, 7, 1, 4, 2, 8. I always say six decimals enough. And finally, C is 41,543.085, I think, 714. Now it says, write a quadratic regression model that fits this thing. Now I didn't tell you where to round to. Oh, in the actual problem I did, it says round all answers to the nearest thousand. So we're going to round to the thousands place somewhere. I did. I don't know why it's not coming up here. So round to the thousands place. Uh, let's see. Yeah, I'm going to highlight those thousands place. That's this two. That's this one. That's this five. So let me see if I can get this equation correct. I'll do it in purple. Y equals three nine five point one four three x squared minus one zero one five point three seven one x plus four one five four three point zero eight six wow lots of mistakes can be made on that one so we got to graph this sucker. Holy crap. Now the y-intercept is 41,543. So we got to graph this sucker. So, by the way, I wrote 345,395, but I forgot that this stupid thing was actually a 34. So this should be 34, not 39. Sorry about that. 34. Okay. Uh, and we said this was negative, right? This negative? Yeah, this was negative right here. Okay, so let's get this sucker typed into our calculator. A lot going on here. Uh, dinked, dinked. Oops, Doc B, get rid of that crap. Go into graph mode. All right, so it's 345.143x squared minus 10. 15.371x plus 41,543.086. Enter. I don't even see anything. Anything. Well, let's think about this. Our cases went from zero to four. Zero to four. So if I'm going to change my window settings, I might want to go negative one to, I don't know, maybe negative one to 10. Now my Y minimum, I don't really necessarily want neg. It's up at 40. Let's change that to negative 1,000. You'll see why in a minute. And let's change this to 50,000. I got to get over 41,000. I, I know it's over 41,000. Let's try 50,000. Ah, now I'm starting to see a little bit of the shape. But I, really, I don't know if I see enough of the shape. It's good enough. Probably good enough. So there's my equation. I don't know why it's getting putting these in, 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 in scientific notation. That's really weird. So there's my graph. So I said my x min was 0 or negative, negative 1. I went to 10. I went 1, negative 1,000. And the, the reason I only did negative 1,000 so I can at least see the axes. And I went all the way up to 50,000. 
Uh, if I wanted to look at the ta the table on this one, if I'm going to 50,000, first of all, I guess I'll start my table at zero. And I only got to get to like 10, so maybe my table step could be, I don't know, one maybe. Probably one. I'm only going to zero to one. That's probably good enough. And it says, during what year does the model predict the minimum number of A's? Now, okay, so this is the bottom of the parabola down here. We're looking for a minimum, so we're going to menu... Analyze graph minimum. Click, click. There it is right there. 1.47 years. So T equals 1.47 years. Now, let's say what happened in this thing. It says during what year? Now, remember, zero represented 1999. That means one represented the year 2000, and two represents the year 2001. So this is like one and a half years. So that's like during the year 2000 in June, right? So the answer to this question is in the year 2000. There will be a minimum, minimum number of AIDS cases. All right. I think that's it. I think the rest of the pages is just some notes on making sure you understand how to change things, how to look at things, how to... Remember, find the axis of symmetry helps you find a good window. Analyzing graph. There's some ideas, some things for you just for yourself. We don't have any problems there, thank goodness, because this, this thing's already taken well over an hour. Just some ideas for you later on to go back, take a look at how to use this particular graphing calculator. Uh, so I know this was a long one, so don't hit the comments and go, oh my God, that was a long one. But hopefully you got a good idea how to look at windows and how to look at graphs and how to recognize um, parabolic curves that have a maximum that are coming down, that go up and then come back down. Anyway, that's it, kids. I'm out of here. This was a long one. I'm going to eat some breakfast and drink some more coffee. Peace out. Bye. No, really, bye. No, really. It's over, really. Really, it's finally over. Go. Why are you still here? I'm going to hit the stop button when you all hit the stop button. Here's the stop button. No, no, no.